In this video, we're going to show you how to install this faucet and drain kit without it dripping out the bottom of the drain here where the gasket meets the underside of your vanity sink. I know that's a big problem that a lot of people have, and I know you're probably here because of that. You probably installed it exactly like the manufacturer tells you to do, and no matter what you do, you still have dripping. So let's show you first quickly what causes these drips, and then we'll show you how to install it properly to prevent those drips and leaks from happening. Okay, so to be able to understand how it's leaking, let's take a look at the whole stack up of your drain. Here's the cap, the flange. This flange goes right here in the sink. And then this, the tailpipe, mounts from underneath and then underneath you see it just slides right up in there like that see and then this nut right here tightens against the gasket so that it's supposed to be sealed against the bottom of the basin but that doesn't always work out in practice for a lot of people because this is where the water comes out so you don't get a good seal from these i've always thought this was kind of a bad design but that's the way they do it so you see those threads there and then the flange screws onto those threads. Here's the black gasket that goes underneath up against your basin. And this comes up on the threads also. So why is there a problem? Where's the water coming from and where is it leaking? Okay, so looking down into the drain hole, you see how it's hollow inside there? There's a hole right here. There's like a channel that runs up inside. This is like a, think of it as a double hole. And it comes all the way up here to your overflow drain opening. See, here's your overflow right here. So the water, if you left the sink on and running, the water would come in this hole and it would run down inside the channel and come out inside the drain. Okay, so now you understand how the overflow works. When the water comes into the middle of the drain from that overflow, see, it goes through these three weeping holes. And then once the water enters these three weeping holes, boom, it just goes right down the drain. No problem. Should be the end of the story. And it normally is. However, with your regular drain operation, what happens is water coming in and splashing down the drain from inside the sink can end up shooting out these weeping holes. That's the problem. Because there's nothing sealing these weeping holes against the middle of the, of the drain opening down there. But once the water is now on the outside of these threads, it runs down to the gasket. And this gasket is not really there to stop water. It's there more for the pressure than anything else to hold the, the pipe and everything together. So this gasket does not give you an adequate seal and that's why you see water dripping. So how do we fix that? Now there's sort of an unwritten rule in plumbing that maybe you don't know about, but whenever, the rule I use is whenever I'm putting two threaded components together in plumbing, I always make sure the male component gets Teflon tape on it. That way you're gonna get a perfect seal. You should always do it, even if the manufacturer didn't specifically specify it, it's a good idea to do it anyway unless they specifically say not to, unless they specifically say not to add the pipe dope on there, then don't do it. But in this case, this is what solves our problem. So we're gonna show you two spots that we need to add the Teflon tape to close the deal here for you. And we'll make this leak proof for you, guaranteed. Okay, so the two places we're going to add the Teflon tape are right here at the top where it meets the flange. And then wherever the position is on this pipe, on the threads, where the gasket ends up being in its final resting place after being tight. This means we now have to do a quick dry fit. So we're basically going to install and uninstall this thing because we have to determine where does the gasket land on here so we know where to put the Teflon tape. Okay, so we'll put the flange in there. I'm gonna come up from underneath with the pipe, put the flange in, I'm going to screw the pipe as far as I can into the flange. So now it's tight. I'm gonna pull it down. We're gonna go underneath now and tighten it and see where it lands on the threads. Okay, so I've just gotten it reasonably tight in there. This is how it's going to fit when it's installed, right? So now we'll undo the, the nut there. So the gasket is in the position on the threads where it's going to be when it's installed. Okay, so if I start at the bottom of that weeping hole, you can see I'm going to count one, two, three, and it looks like I start on the fourth thread down. And it probably will run, I don't know, three or four threads. And then we'll put another strip around the top. Now, which direction do you wrap it in? That's what everybody wants to know. That's always the burning question. The, the best way to get it up over the tape is to actually tighten it up this way, right? So we're going to be going, if you're looking at, at from the top down on the drain if you're looking from the top down 
we're gonna be going counterclockwise. So for this, in order to wrap that tape around, we have to go counterclockwise around on that part because of the direction that this guy is going to spin here, the gasket. For the top part, where the flange, as you can see here, the flange is going to spin like this, clockwise. So in order to reinforce our tape, when we wrap it around, we have to go clockwise. If you're looking from the top of the drain down. Okay, so we've got our Teflon tape. Okay, so I will start wrapping it around clockwise. I like to kind of push it into the threads a little bit. I'll go really slow here for you so that we can see exactly what's going on. But you basically just wrap it around like that. I, I like to go like two or three turns. Okay, so we're there. And remember, you're going to be holding this flange still stationary and then turning the pipe up into it like that. So this will reinforce the direction of the tape. We slide the gasket down. And remember, sometimes the gasket will just be forced straight up. So the idea is to just make sure that we get the tape on there. So we're going to come down to that spot that I said where it was going to end up at. Get this tape started. And remember, this time we're going to go the other way. We're going to go counterclockwise. Doesn't really matter a whole lot on this one if your gasket is just going to slide upward. There's your solution right there. So let's get it installed. Now there's two schools of thought here as to whether you should apply plumber's putty on the bottom of the flange here or silicone. Now this particular manufacturer specifically called out silicone. They did not say to use plumber's putty. Now in our previous video, we got a lot of arrogant comments from a lot of arrogant plumbers out there who are saying, you don't know what you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. The problem is, is this is black plastic. You can't put plumber's putty against this black plastic. It'd cause it to dry and crack. That's the, what most of them say on the can if you look. And we covered that in detail in our previous video, which I will remind you again, make sure you go and check that one out. It has much more detail than this. But here, I'm just gonna run this bead around the flange here, just like they tell us to do in the installation guide. You know, this is, the debate has gone on for years about this with different plumbers as to whether you should use plumber's putty or silicone. Some prefer plumber's putty, that's all they've ever used, and there's no reason to use anything else. Uh, I happen to think that silicone seals better because it doesn't dry and it's, it lasts a lot longer and it won't dry and crack. Plumber's putty will. Okay, do not take the film off of this until it's all done and installed and everything. So now we're going to set this down right there in the drain and kind of mash it down a bit. Now underneath in the bottom of the cabinet, we're going to screw this into it. Coming from underneath, there you can see my Teflon tape. So you know I got it in the right spot there, right? So it's going to seal everything against that. See, as, as you turn the nut, it just starts forcing the gasket upward. And remember, as you're twisting, you stop when that big opening on the back of the drain pipe, the opening for the lift rod, is facing completely backwards like that. Yeah. So make sure you hold the pipe with one hand and you tighten with the other hand and just hand tighten only. I think a lot of people make a mistake here and they think, oh, I'm leaking, so I need to tighten it more and more and more. And they start whipping out the channel locks and pliers or whatever, and they start tightening this way beyond its means. And now you're distorting the shape of it and causing even more leaks. So hand tighten only or follow the directions, whatever the directions say. But in this case, our directions say hand tighten only. Okay, so now that everything is tight, I always like to come in and I'll add a little bead of silicone going all the way around here because you know you're not gonna get enough in there perfectly. So just a thin bead, you know, look for a whole lot. And remember, we still have the film on there protecting the... And by the way, make sure you buy a 100% pure clear silicone and make sure that on the, on the tube that it says that you can test in 30 minutes. So you have to wait 30 minutes before you can do any kind of water testing. You can wet your finger too. Some people do that, they find that helps, but you gotta do it right away. You only have a couple of minutes before this starts to set up. 
So you just peel it right off of there. And then that one little spot back here, we'll get that. Now you gotta let it wait until the end of the curing time for your silicone. Okay, now usually the faucet part is quite simple. You just gotta take these nuts off of there. And this is really my favorite type because these are the easiest ones to install and remove. If you ever have to remove any of those 30 year old faucets, holy cow. I've spent an hour on just one old rusty metal nut before. Make sure your gasket is on there and then you seat it down right on there and make sure it fits on the gasket. So then from underneath, when we go to tighten it, I'm gonna use this, this is my rigid wrench. I love this thing. I'll put a link to it down in the description for you. I've been using this for years and it's got the biggest, best grip out there. But this comes up underneath your, your nut when you're reaching way up high and see how it fits on it and you just turn it to tighten. So here we're tightening it against the underside of the granite. There's that one. Let's get the other one now. Okay, now you you always want to seal around the front here with the silicone. And I have to go get my smaller tube. I highly recommend you get a small tube that you can fit back to do the back. And what this does is it prevents any time there's any water from getting in here, from getting underneath and dripping down inside the vanity. Okay. Next goes the lift rod. And when you put the stopper in, remember, the hole goes in the back, towards the back. Now this particular faucet doesn't have the, the ball and the rod like you normally see in others, which I can't stand that. This is a much simpler mechanism. You take this little yellow cap off that's only on there for shipping purposes. And this is going to go right snap into the mechanism. See the little clips on here? You see it snapped? So it goes right into place, it locks right in there. And then this raises it and lowers it. Okay, so this is probably a Glacier Bay thing, but the way our lift rod strap works is your lift rod plugs right into that hole and it clicks into place, see? And then this, I like this, see how you have this adjustment here? This clips on to our strap, our hose on. And there it is. Up, down, up, down. Okay, now the one very important step that you need to do that a lot of people forget to do or don't even know to do is you gotta remove the aerator and you have to blow out the faucet there and let all of the sediment that might be in there from the manufacturing process clean out the lines and everything. So you just let it run a minute or so. Screw the aerator back on. Okay, so now here's how we test it. I like to let the faucet run for a few minutes. Then while the faucet's running, you have your pan down below, below your P-trap and you're checking every single connection where there's a nut. You're checking here, you're checking here. This is the most problematic one for most people. And so this is why I always tell people, tighten this one first when you're assembling everything before you do any of the other connections. This one's the most important connection. So you need to make sure that the P-trap arm is fitting down inside the nut and that it's trapped in place and that it's tightened down before any of these others are tightened. Okay. Then once they're tightened, you want to make sure that this is lifted up high enough that it causes a downward slant. So that's the way it should look. Your bubble should be just touching or past the right line there. And that means you're at the proper slope. So now nobody can come in and accuse you of having your P-trap at the improper slope. Okay, so we've done our first water test, but wait a minute folks, let's not start celebrating yet. We still have a couple of more tests to do. Now we want to run the same test with hot water because I want to see, you know, if this plastic warms up and expands and gets to know its neighbor parts and says hello and everything, right? So then we want to check again for leaks once it cools back down also. Okay, so with the hot water running for several minutes, you should be feeling around here and again checking for leaks. See if the plastic expanded and caused any leaks or anything. Well, let's not start high-fiving each other just yet, folks, because we're still not done. We still have two more tests to go here. What we want to do now is fill up the basin and test the overflow, because remember, that's a separate path down the drain. We have to check every path of the drain to make sure we've got it properly sealed. So now the water's starting to overflow into the overflow opening there, and it is now pouring down the drain through its own separate path. Then after you've checked the P-trap, make sure you check here all the way around the seal of the gasket. And if you're still getting drops there, folks, remember, do not use plumber's putty. I know a lot of people like to stick it there, 
but you really shouldn't use plumber's putty here at all. So I've had some back and forth with the engineering team at OD, the makers of the plumber's putty, and they have confirmed for me that you're not to use this up against any type of black rubber like that gasket there. And their reasoning is that this can dry and crack it over time, and then you'll have an even worse leak. So I know a lot of plumbers have done this over the years. They stick some plumber's putty under the bottom and they think that's solving the problem, but it really isn't. All you're doing is masking the problem, putting a Band-Aid on it. We solved the problem already, folks, by adding that second piece of Teflon tape going around the bottom. So now that we have the sink filled up, we're gonna empty out the whole sink at once and do that test as well. What I like to do is to put a paper towel down here underneath to see if there's any visual drops of water. You wanna see if there's a few drops coming down. Now what happens normally, this is where the biggest failure happens for people on P-traps, is on this second nut back here. So this is why I say it's so important to make sure this connection is perfectly level when you put it together to avoid any drops coming down later on. That connection must be satisfied first before you tighten any of these other ones. And we have another successful repair here, and this should do it for you. And if you like what you've learned here so far today, hey, do us a favor, would you please give us a thumbs up down below there? That tells us that you like us. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, man, all I can say is why haven't you? You've seen all of the great world-class content that we upload for you here, all of the videos that we upload on remodeling your homes, and, and we also have great videos on remodeling your kitchens. We do full remodels, we cover all sorts of topics related to it. We cover all sorts of videos on remodeling your bathrooms and making the most world-class bathrooms you could possibly make. We have videos covering all sorts of tiling of your homes and we cover all sorts of engineering disasters. And we even have shop with me's in the local Home Depots and the Lowe's and the Costco's and show you all of the best, latest, greatest tool deals out there. And we have some of the best tool review tests around. And we even do severe drop testing of our tools and everything, all for you folks. So make sure you click on that subscribe button. And when you do that, click that little gray bell icon next to it. That tells YouTube to alert you every time we upload a video because you don't want to miss one of ours, folks. Thank you so much for joining us this time and we'll see you on the next one.